Alright everyone, we have the best bounty fest. I just did a EX one, now we're gonna do bounty fest only. So I kinda made some of the list already, so we don't need to waste time. So these characters I think really need buffs, like these are really really old characters, like I think almost these characters came out around the first or second year the game existed. Magellan, I would love a buff. Uh, Kuzan, Akainu, OG Akainu, of course, would, could use a buff. This old Whitebeard, Big Mom. Just all these characters need buffs. They're just really old characters. Some of them are a little good, like Kilimon and Dofi. They're not horrible. They're still somewhat usable, but they uh, they could still use a buff. If Shiki got a buff, they could definitely get a buff. And then, of course, old Rayleigh, he would be insane with a buff. Um... Chopper would be good with a buff, and then uh, this row I got good, but still could use a buff. So these characters aren't necessarily bad, but imagine them with a buff. Like, uh, you know, Shiki got a buff, even though he's not even that old. But yeah, Usopp, Frankie, OG Zoro, Queen, even though Queen's not too, too old, but yeah, honestly, he was never necessarily good. He's not bad, but... Pal, his Pallet does a lot of damage. Imagine his buff. Uh, Mihawk, I would love his buff. Rob Luch, he would be a good buff. Broodlight is extremely new, but honestly, she just isn't that great. She is annoying, but if you play it carefully, like if you're a Roger, you're most likely going to grab the flag instead of being hit with her mirror. You could still activate the mirror, but he, the Roger could just dodge it unless if he sucks at the game. But, and then this OG Kaido, imagine him with a buff, he's insane already. Luffy could use a buff, uh, this guy, Robin, could use a buff, OG Nami, Sengoku is probably the buff I want the most other than Mihawk, would be insane. And then down here, I just have good characters, like, these characters just barely didn't make the top 10. Actually, honestly, he could use a buff. He's good, but he could use a buff, I mean. But yeah, these characters I think are good and just barely did not make the top 10. And then these characters, uh, I'm going to edit it in a second, but these characters right here are all the characters I'll put in the top 10. It's just what order will I put them in, but alright, let's start with that. We'll do defenders first. So, top 10, this is does not mean he's bad, but Jozu. I think Jozu, some people might say he doesn't even deserve to be in the top 10, but I think Jozu is extremely underrated. Like, every time I run into a Jozu in League Battle, he's invincible. The only way you kill him is if you catch him with team boost off guard and not in his diamond state. If you're a good Jozu player, you're not gonna die. Unfortunately, that does mean you do gotta be careful of Roger still. He, his damage isn't great, but... Defense wise he is insane imagine I don't think he would get a buff. I don't think he needs one But imagine a buff where he can fill the gauge past the amount or something, but All right, that is number nine. So or number ten. So next we have Yasab. I think Yasab is another extremely underrated bounty fest Especially in this meta you shoot someone with your skill one or whatever it is They can't grab the treasure for like 30 seconds or 20 seconds. I don't know the exact time, but it's insane Like imagine you have 30 seconds left and you just get shot You can't do anything you gotta rely on your team and well that doesn't go very well most of the time relying on your team Next we got a buff a recent buff. She just buffed what like three days ago uh, sugar, I think she's extremely good. Filling the gauge past the limit may seem little, but that is actually insane. And uh, she was already good. I would have probably put her in good, but could still use a buff before her buff. But after your buff, she's pretty insane. Then next, we will put. Um, I think, unfortunately, and I'm uh, I'm put treble. I love treble, but. I think he doesn't go that high on the list. I think he's easily top 10 though. Like 60% chance to perfect dodge basically. Not get hit. That's insane. Like yeah true if you have a multi attack hitter or something. Like Roger catches you with a stun. But 60% chance is good odds. Like that is actually insane. He's, gonna, he's so annoying. Plus he can pull anyone off the flag. With just his normals. Anyone. Laws. Rogers. 
I mean, Roger could stun you, but you still got that 60% chance not to be stunned, and you still get him off the flag. His skill 1, he hits you like 30 times, and then his skill 2, you can just attack Roger from range. He's insane. Also, the one thing, this is in this current meta, not in their prime or anything, so... Yeah, Treble definitely easily deserves a spot. Next, I will probably have to put Rayleigh. Rayleigh is pretty good against Rogers. Uh, not sure about Lawn Kids, but I think he does pretty good. Again, he requires some skill, of course, perfect dodging skill. But he's still insanely good. His shield's OP. Everything, his skill too is pretty insane. And he is just overall a really good defender. I almost put treble in front of him, but honestly, I think if you're skilled, really, it would be way better. Alright, next we are going to put Brook. Even though Roger kind of stops him from being too, too OP, you can still freeze Roger if he's under, what, 90%, 80% HP? I forgot exactly what it is. Plus, you can still knock him off the flag. Brook is, uh, when he came out, he was basically an EX uh, when he came out. He was so broken, and he still is. I think people think that because of the new meta, he's not as good anymore, but I think he's extremely good still in this meta. And then next, we have another buffed character, Fujitoa. Uh, of course, his meteor hits hard. I've never used him. I've only seen gameplay and get fought against him, but... Every time I get hit with that meteor, I am dead instantly. You don't even see him call it most of the time. You're just chilling there fighting him, and oh, there's a meteor. And then his skill 1 is pretty good, too. He can knock you off the flag, plus make you, like, be downed for a longer period of time. Is insane. Alright, now we got the top 3 best defender, Bounty Fest. For... This, I will put Bello Betty, even though she doesn't have attacker moves, a good skill to set on Bello Betty. She's literally invincible if she's on the flag. And her, her teammates. I'm not even sure if it's on the flag. Yeah, 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 it is, it is. Never mind. It, unfortunately, it's not like Odin where you're just invincible when you have it, but. And plus, so you start off, imagine, and then you use your buff thing, the flag waving thing to buff your teammates on a Roger. That Roger is going to destroy everyone and everything, and your other teammates too. She can buff your teammates, she can make your teammates invincible, she is insane. Even though she doesn't have a really any attacking moves at all. But next we have, for number 2, Uta. Uta, of course, is still an extremely, extremely good um, bounty fest. Technically, she's SP, which is uh, special something. I'm still counting her as a bounty fest, just like these other SPs. They are basically bounty fest, in my opinion. I mean, I think they are. They do, yeah, they count as bounty fest because they're in the more expensive uh, battle point shop, so. Yeah, Uta's pretty good. She has a move that can actually knock Roger off the flag, which is pretty good. Unfortunately, she still gets stunned. But she can still get Roger if he's below whatever HP. And then finally we have Mamanosuke. I think Mamanosuke is extremely good. Of course, um, he he can knock Roger off the flag with his skill. I'm pretty sure. Unfortunately, he can't really deal with Roger other than that. But teleporting to the flag is insane for a defender. And he is tanky, and he has so many heals, so he's extremely good. But that is my top 10 best defenders. Let's move on to runners now. So, uh, people might not agree with this, but Soba Mask, like, we got, like, down here, let's look. We got Marco Hakuba still. We got this Sanji that buffed, which honestly is even that good. But uh, Karasu... I think being invisible plus having a shield is just way more worth than what being a... The, Hakuba honestly is more of an attacker. He's a runner attacker. He does insane damage, but in this meta, honestly, Hakuba is not it. But turning invisible and running away is pretty insane for a defense or a runner. Like, that's literally what you need to do. You need to get away from the enemy and grab flags, and that's exactly what he does. And then next we have for runners, I'm going to put Rayleigh, uh, where is he, Prime Rayleigh, if I can find him, actually no, not Prime Rayleigh, 
I think I switched that out. Yeah, I switched that out. Or no, there's primarily. I don't know what I'm talking about. Primarily, he does require skill, but he is an insanely good uh, runner. Insane damage if you do get a perfect dodge off, of course. He's got a teleporting skill. He has an annoying skill that can stun you, uh, I believe, right? He stuns him with skill 2, I think it is. But yeah, insanely good runner. Just get away from the enemy, knock him back, grab the flag, whatever you gotta do. But after Rayleigh, we have Boa, another character I think that is underrated. Uh, she came out during Film Red, of course. Uh, she isn't good, really good against people with like status effect remove, of course, or whatever it is. But if she turns you to stone, you're pretty much dead. Like, there's not much you can do. And she has a good knockback skill. She has a running skill to make her faster than normal runners, just like Roger as a bounty vest. And I think she is just ex insanely good. Next, we got our first buffed runner. And I think only buffed runner on this list. Kizuru. His damage is pretty insane. He's pretty fast. On certain maps, last second, you go as him. You teleport, like on uh, uh, Coliseum stage to the treasure. You win the game. It's, he's pretty insane for that. And that's why he is as high as he is. Next we have Usopp of Film Red. I think he is another underrated character. Like just put them to sleep, grab the flag. There's nothing they can do about it. Uh, I'm mean, again a status effect characters. It doesn't really work on too much, but Usopp he has. I think he has multiple lives, just like the other Usops. And he just he all you have to do is run, get a character you can put to sleep, put them to sleep, grab the flag while they're on it, and then you're good. But finally, top five, or yeah, top five runners we have is Queen. Again, same reason as Soba Mask, he can turn invisible. Unfortunately, you can't just do it on a whim like Soba Mask, but other than a few characters who counter Queen, he is pretty good. Like, you get knocked back, you're turning invisible pretty much, other than like Zoro's. Gear Fist can't even hurt him unless if they use their ultimates. But Queen is insanely good. He has insane damage. He has a knockback skill. He has a running skill, I guess. I don't think it makes him faster, though. The only way he's swinging his sword. He can turn invisible, grab the flag while people are on it. Pretty insane for a runner, of course. Everything you want. Alright, next we have Hordy. Hordy, again, just like Hakaba, is a. Uh, I think almost an attacker in a runner character. He has a uh, basically red haired state, not quite red haired state, but it's pretty much like it in my opinion. And then his skill 2 and 1, I forget whatever his attacking one is, does insane damage and it's multi hit 2. So you would like, he one shots most characters in the game, unless if they have a second life. Like his damage is insane. And then he. He can heal himself even though he gets rid of some of his health and then, you know, but he's still insanely good. Next is probably, I think, the fastest runner in the game. I think he does beat King Frankie. He has a perfect dodge. Pretty good. Of course, perfect dodging. He has a, a running skill that is on the bike, of course, making him the fastest character in the game. He has another skill that can jump across pretty much everything you want for a runner. Frankie has it, but I just don't think he is necessarily as good as number one and two, which number two, of course, King. I think King is more valuable overall. He's more tanky. Frankie cannot really tank much at all, like in a few attacks and he's dead. But of course, he has that perfect dodge if you're skilled enough. He probably would be above King, but I think King overall is better. He's almost as fast as Frankie. Uh, he has a pretty good skill. His damage is insane. His skill 1, you can knock people back and stun them. Pretty insane for a runner, again. And then finally, number 1, pretty obvious, Green Bull. Uh, unfortunately, he's not like Kaido, but he is like Kaido at the same time. He teleports to the closest treasure, which is not necessarily bad, but kind of weird sometimes. Like, sometimes you want to back cap them, not go to the treasure you're nearest where they're all on it you know but 
I think Green Bolt overall is still really good. I think he has anti-heal too, that he can inflict his uh, tree, his damage is decent. I wouldn't say it's insane, but pretty good overall. And then let's get to the attackers. So that's my top five runners, Bounty Fest. And this is currently up to right before Jirachi leaves. So we're going to get two more Bounty Fest. Uh, literally when Roger leaves in like one day or something like that. So this video definitely won't come out during that time. But they probably like after Annie, like King Albert and Queen were after Annie characters. They were insanely good. So we might get an insanely good uh, Roger counter that comes out after this is published. But this is before it. So... We got then Dofi at number 10. Uh, Dofi, I think his shield is pretty useful. Some people can attack through it, unfortunately, but he is still insanely good. His crits are insane. If you're fighting a red, it's pretty much over for that red character. Um, but other than that, he is pretty solid. Honestly, he doesn't, like, I want to say put him in good, but still could use a buff. But honestly, Dofi is so OP. I don't think he needs a buff. Saying he's in the top 10 at least, but... Alright, next we have Katakuri, our only... I think our only? Yeah, only buffed character for attackers. His damage is insane. Unfortunately, he is not insanely tanky. He is pretty tanky, but not insanely good. Now, if uh, V2 Katakuri got a buff wherever I put him in, I think I put him in need a buff. Yeah, right here. Of course, he's a defender, but he would be an insane cool buff. But this category, he they made him pretty good. His damage is insane. His attacks are pretty insane. Stuff like that. But next we have, let's see, Robin, of course. This is a, a runner meta right now. You see Claws running around. You see Rogers running around. Of course, mostly a runner meta. Robin, of course, destroys runners. And her damage is insane. But unfortunately, there is a lot of Film Red Shanks running around. Which is pretty much her counter, like, Shanks will destroy her in one hit, unfortunately. So that's not, that's why she's not lower. If it was just, like, Rogers running around in Claws and Kaido, she would probably be up top three, maybe, or something. But she is still insanely good. Her damage is insane, of course. That runner, more damage against the runner, is mostly why she is here. Next, I am going to have to put... Pero Sparrow, he is really good. He can candyfy Rogers, White Beards, even though it's for like only a few seconds, but still insane. Of course, there's a few characters that can counter him. Shanks, mostly. Uh, Zoro's get destroyed by him. Mostly any character running around in this matter right now. Zoro, Shanks, is Rogers, White Beard, Yamato, and Aces. He claps almost all of them. Literally, Shanks is the only one. He, yeah, if Paris Veil vale falls off and falls on, when there's a new, like, OP, whatever, and get rid of status effect or whatever it is, uh, character, he falls off. But right now, again, Roger won't get candy fighter right away, but you just need to damage him a little bit, and then he's candy fight, and then it's just free. Next, then, I'm going to have to put Sanji. Sanji is insanely good, but he needs to be built up, unfortunately, which could take a while. But his damage, once he's built up, he could be top 3, but... Yeah, his uh, skill 1 and skill 2, really good. Teleporting skill, he has a multi-hit skill. Pretty much everything an attacker needs. He does decent against Rogers. He can change his type just like Zoro. Pretty much a mini EX Zoro, pretty much. Uh, that's what he is, so... Pretty good character, once again, of course. Next, I'm going to have to put a Film Red Nami. Her damage is insane, plus her, like, she's annoying to fight, like, I I always match with them and they're just sitting in their spawn using the cloud attack, but that's how she's supposed to be played, I guess, but it's very annoying, but she is pretty broken, she can get Rogers pretty easily, she can one-shot Film Red Shanks's, uh, one-shot Kaido's, Kids, even Law, honestly, yeah, she can even one-shot Law, I've seen that happen before. Uh, when he's not fully built up yet, even if he's not fully built up, her damage is insane, even with type disadvantage. But yeah, Nami is extremely good. She definitely deserves top 5 attackers. 
and she can also go invisible, which is also a plus, I guess. Next, I'm gonna have to put Katakuri. Again, insane character, he has a biscuit that he can basically summon an infinite of them. If they get destroyed, he heals every time it gets destroyed. He can just summon another one, get destroyed, heal. Uh, his skill 1, I'm pretty sure, can remove damage buff or whatever. Or ignore defense buff, whatever it is. Uh, his normals are decent, he can combo people with them. Uh, what else? He can... He does decent against Roger. He just keeps summoning a biscuit on Roger, and eventually it's gonna get him uh, when he's on the flag and gets destroyed. So next we have Uta. Of course, she has shield. She has an annoying status effect. She has a really OP skill too. She has heals. She has crit. Everything, and uh, I think she definitely deserves. Uh, number three, but the next character she can honestly be switched with it's just more of your preference or if you're skilled enough Of course Albert takes some skill you need to perfect dodge in some circumstances Uta will probably be better But if you're skilled with Albert you will be better than any Uta Of course uh, he's invincible if you can dodge for three attacks. He has insane damage. He has a flame He has uh, he can knock feet of Roger off the flag and he's just insanely good and then finally, number one, of course, there's only one character left. Uh, Odin, of course, a literally invincible on a flag. There's only a few characters who can even semi-counter him. Roger, if you stun him, then you gotta get him off the flag, though, somehow, with, like, one HP. Uh, flame character, you can knock him out. And then a flame them, and then they're dead. They're just gonna burn to death right away. But yeah, insane. He can be on uh, unclaimed treasure, he can be on your treasure, he can be on your enemy treasure, no matter what, he's invincible. Which is just insane. Just like a Bello Betty attacker, basically. That's way, 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 way better. His damage is insane, also. He has insane heals, even though heals don't really matter because you just get back to 1 HP in like an instant with Odin. But yeah, just play on that treasure and you'll be good. But yeah, that is my top 10 of each uh, Bounty Fest class. I was just going to do a straight up top 10, but that's not really fair because, you know, they're better in this way, they're better in that way, they're better in their way. And it just wouldn't make too, too much sense, but... But yeah, I think best defender, Momonosuke right now. Honestly, maybe, just maybe, Uta... Uh, bellow under certain circumstances if your team's actually good and uses your buff uh, Green Bull I think is the best runner. I don't think that's really debatable much mm, And then Odin I think is the best attacker which could be semi debatable I think I think these three all could be interchanged a uh, Uta with her shield Odin with his invincibility Albert with his invincibility plus insane damage They all have insane damage and they could just be switched all three of these. And then honestly Cracker could join them. Like Cracker is pretty insane too. Under certain circumstances. But if you run into a familiar Shanks you're most likely dead. Even though he can semi handle Shanks. But yeah. Those are my list. Needs buff. Could use buff. And then these characters are just barely made out of the top 10. I really wanted to put Horty in uh, Defenders. But I just didn't have room for him. And then honestly Sabo is good. But he could use buff. But, yeah, that is my top 10 uh, Bounty Fest list of each type.